okay hello okay good so yeah uh, welcome um, so uh, i'm morten i'm working for the integration team in uh, in oslo <coughs> been leading that together with a guy called bob joyf uh, so today we're just going to talk a little bit about what we've been doing lately uh, a little bit about future developments and and maybe get some feedback from, from you guys also. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, yes, so as I said, uh, our, our, our team is relatively small. Uh, most of you probably know Bob Jolliffe. He's been around for a long, long, long time. If you haven't done anything for the server, uh, he's, he's always been around there for a long time. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm also leading that with, with him. Um, and we have a full-time engineer called Claude, uh, which some of you might, may, might have seen in the annual conference. And then we have a new guy called Yuan, which just joined us a few months back. Uh, and obviously, we're also trying to use the HISP network itself. So, um, and some of them are coming with their own expertise. For example, Sam, who's been working on the Rapid Pro before. He was very, very useful when we were doing that, that project. And, and, and Clifford was doing a lot of um, fire stuff. And I think this website has been mentioned before, but I just want to put that link again. So these are kind of our main entry points for in, 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 in the integration and the fire uh, websites. And especially the fire website will be updated soon again. Uh, there have been quite a lot of new stuff hap happening there. So I'm going to go through a couple of new features coming in version 40. Or, well, when you upgrade to the version 40, that's available for you. Again, those are a little bit more technical. So I'll try to not go into too much technical details. Um, but the first one I'm going to talk about is what we call the root API. So the root API, it's, it's basically a proxy, right? So it, it, it allows you to reach out to other services. You can imagine reaching out to an ICD-11 service, for example, to get some terminology list. Um, and, and you can do, if you have your own little, a little um, gateway that you want to do some, some kind of uh, working on the data and then get that back into DHS2 through your custom app, uh, it will allow that. Uh, you can even talk to other DHSU instances. Um, so, for example, if you want to pull some organets or, or from a different DHSU, DHSU instance, you can do that using this API directly in your app. Uh, so it does allow you to kind of have this sort of kind of real-time uh, connection to other systems. Um, yeah, so, so, so a little bit more technical details, but it will also tell you the user that initiated that that call, right? So if you have a user called Morton or admin or system, that will be added to the request itself, which allow your service to then react to that. Um, so yeah. So I have a small, small demo of that. Uh, so now I just have to find the right. So this is just a very, very simple app that uh, my colleague from His Vietnam helped me create. Uh, so it has, in, the, in this server already, there is, exists now a very simple route that goes out to a web service that will provide some data for us. It's not easy to in this case, it's a different service, but this is just like a showing of what you could do. So in this case, we will select, it doesn't, it doesn't get data elements actually, we should have renamed that, but So clicking fetch now. So this request, this data is not coming from DHS2 at all. And actually it's coming from, I can maximize the window a little bit. It is actually coming from uh, a, a small service I made in Python. Now this is a very simple example. We're just getting some simple data, but I could also do a post and process some data, send it back. I can do uh, a, a client lookup, for example, right? So if you want to talk to another system, say, do you, do you have this client there? Uh, you can do that, and then you can import that into your app. And then that's a very, very nice way of, 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 of not being kind of tightly uh, connected and having to duplicate a lot of data. So you can kind of allow you to search in other systems. So just to verify, as you will see now, I can just show that. Ah, let me not do that. Anyways, it's a very simple, simple route, and it's, if you want more details about this, we have documentation for it, 
There are also some slides I showed on Tuesday talk, which were quite a bit more technical. And then you will see how to actually do that and how to create your own routes that, that, that you want to do. So the next one is called event hooks. So th through the time we had multiple versions of this in some way or another. If, you, if you've been around a long time, you know we had RabbitMQ at some point. We even had Kafka. We had a few different versions of this exact thing. Um, but this is kind of a re-implementation of that. This is a, something completely new that we have now in version 40. Um, and it's not tied to a specific system itself. This is something that's happening internally. And then you define your, where you want to send it yourself. So that could be a webhook. It could be um, a queue, a queuing system like Apache Artemis or actually MQ. Uh, it could also be Kafka if you want, that's also supported. Um, and you can even put that directly in, in, into the, the console. Uh, so right now, we are supporting two types of events. And that's metadata, which is probably the one you will be using quite a lot. And it's a scheduler. So by having these two, this will allow you to know Whenever an organic is created, updated, deleted, whenever a data element is updated, or created, whenever a data set is updated, and so on. And you will get an event to that destination that you selected. Could be a small service or it could be a queue. And then you can act on that and you can react to that. And it is opt in. So make sure that you do enable it if you want to, 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 to work, work with it. I'm not even sure if this is name on apply play service, to be honest, but, uh, but at least if you do it on your own, you can, you can uh, update your DSA, DSS conf. So yeah, so, so as, as I said, we have gone through a previous period of transition. If you know anything about, a little bit about internal DSS2, you will know today we are using Artemis for this audit logging. Um, that's going away, hopefully. Uh, and be, being replaced now with a system that is not tied to specific te te technology. Um, again, just some examples of what you can listen to. As I said, we have the scheduler and we have the metadata. Um, you can listen to everything. So you create an event hook that just says metadata. You will get every single update to your metadata in the system. Uh, or you can be more specific. In this case, organization unit, or you can do data element, or you can do indicators, or whatever you want to do. And then you, that will allow you then to, to react just to those changes, right? You can imagine synchronizing organites from a system to another system, then you just want to listen to the metadata. And you can, of course, create multiple event hooks also. So you can, for specific use, use cases, maybe specific targets, so you can create m m many of them. So regarding a little bit of the future plans for the event hook system, as I said, we do not support the aggregate and track it today. Uh, we are hoping to further increase support for this in version 41. Um, exactly how much and where we will do that, that's still being a little bit talk talked about. Um, but I think especially for the tracker, uh, this can be very, very useful. You can imagine creating a new patient. You can have another system react to that. You can, um, updating um, an enrollment, completing an enrollment, same with events, right? So it could be very, very useful that, that you have other systems reacting to that. And it's been a, been a much requested feature for a long, long time. And, and we are looking into actually adding more targets, but that we will do when we get the request for it. So whenever you, if you start using this, when you actually upgrade to version 40, and you see, oh, I wish I had this target or this target. Maybe you want to talk to Elasticsearch, for example, or you want to put it in a database even. Uh, we are open to adding more, more, more targets. And it's actually not a, not a huge job for us to add more, more, more to targets. So I also have a small demo of that. So in this case, I have two instances of DHS2. 
So one is running on port 9001 and 1002. And you see they are both on the CRE Leon database, so they kind of look, look the same. But in the background now, in this system, I have created an event hook that will send a notification about data element changes. And I have a small script that will take that information and then it will post it back to this other system. So I will just create, I just do A because it's, then it's get, get, get on the top. So, get the element and then selecting aggregate. That, you see that's on top here. And now it's already in the other system, right? So you can get real time updates like that without any delays. Uh, you could of course also batch them so you can kind of put it in a queue when you get every 10 minutes, you can push that to the other system. But there are many ways of doing that. And this was done with a script that has 10 lines of code. I mean, this is very, very simple, very, very easy to react to these kind of things. Um, you could even go in and then we call it data element one, two, three. We save it, update data element one, two, three, and the other system. Right, so it, it really allows you to do a lot of things like that. Uh, in this case, it's DCS to DCS2, but that doesn't have to be the case, right? There can be any kind of other system for that. And it's really, I think it's a really powerful feature that I really hope you guys will start using uh, in, in the future. Um, and it, again, if any feedback, anything, we are very, very open to that because it is a very new feature. Um, might even call it a little bit experimental, both this and the root API at this point, but we are very open for input and, and what works and what doesn't work. So a little bit about our current projects. Uh, there are always other projects also going on. I just want to highlight a, a, a few of them. Um, <coughs> we are creating a, a, a SDK for, for DHS2, a Java SDK, that you can use in your own integration projects as long as they are Java. We are focusing on Java since we are basically a Java shop. So, um, of course, we are free to use whatever you want in, in integ integration projects, but, but we are using Java. And, and we are also creating what's called a camel component. Uh, how many people have heard about Apache camel? Probably maybe not too many of them. <laughs> All of us heard about it. Um, so it's basically an integration framework uh, that allows you to do stuff like get some data from this system and then push it to another system, get some data, um, yeah, massage some data, even sending a WhatsApp message, a Telegram message, it has components for all of those kind of things. And we have actually created our own component that we have put, put into that, and it's now part of the official Camel release. Um, and that allows you again to very easily talk to DHS2. So it, it's just a one liner, you, you can get some data from DHS2, and then you can do something with that. Get some organits, you know, similar to what I did in, in my demo before, um, but this kind of, the, that, that's real time, but maybe you would do this every night or something, you would do some other thing, and you could have schedules and all kind of things. Uh, if, if you are integrated in Java and integration, you can please search for Apache Camel, and you will get a lot more information. Uh, we are also, with, um, with, the, um, with the help from UNICEF, created a Rapid Pro connector, which allows you to send aggregate data and a few other things, um, from Drapi Pro into DCS2, and also allow you to synchronize users from DCS2 into Drapi Pro. Um, again, it's, it's on, on our GitHub. There's a lot of documentation around it, so if that's something you're using in your country, uh, I would welcome you to have a look at that. I think it will also be extended to Tracker in the future, although I'm not sure if we will do that or not. Uh, and the last one is something that I believe it's happening in India. Um, this is based on the Rapid Pro connector. Uh, so Johan, our new guy in the team, he is working on uh, WhatsApp support for program stage self-reporting. So that means that users can report uh, their own data. And th this is using the new WhatsApp, uh, I think it's called business plan or something. It's, it's, a, it's a new API from WhatsApp that actually allows you to, to, do, to do this. Um, so uh, again, this will be merged into the main Rapid Pro Connected repository, and it's all open source, and it's all freely available and documented. So if that's something that's interesting for you, please, please have, have a look. 
And this is just an overview of, of our stack. Again, we talked about this already, but it's, it's kind of what, what we are currently using. I'm not going to go into the details so much about that, but we are using, again, Camel component, Java, a queuing system, and Camel, and this is Spring Boot, which is also another Java framework. And we are doing a lot of testing also, so all of our integration projects now are more or less automatically tested, and they have been run uh, automatically, like, like the DHS2 itself is. So this is a new one. <laughs> so we, we have been doing fire for a very long time. I think not a lot of people know, know that we have been doing that. I think maybe we got a little bit bad reputation sometimes when it comes to fire, but we have actually been doing fire for a long time. Um, but there haven't been many uh, projects for us to, to actually actively be involved in because, you know, five years ago there wasn't that much fire in, in Asia or in Africa. There was, it's, it's something that's been coming up more and more, right? So, um, so we are starting to focus more and more on fire, and that's something that we will continue doing. Um, how many know what fire is? I, I have a few slides about introduction to what it is. Uh, okay, so. There's a lot of text there. I'm not going to go through all of this text. You can, you can have the slides later and, and uh, have a look at it. But basically, FHIR is, 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 is a new standard. Well, not, not so new anymore, actually. But it's a standard for exchange of health data, right? So it's JSON-based. Well, you can use XML, but most people use JSON. It's uh, have a RESTful API. So it has, in the same way that DHS2, you know, you can do searches and, and filtering and so on. Uh, re, 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 um, Fire is also supporting that. Um, it has what's called a maturity model, which is kind of important. That means I can show you that. I have it uh, here. So this is kind of kind of important when it comes to Fire, is that they have a lot of resources, right? So for example, an organization or a location, right? So and, and you, can, you can compare that to the to the DHS2, like our organization units. But you see there's a number between uh, after all, all of this. And that just means the level of maturity. So it started at zero, which is like highly experimental, and it goes up to four. And then when, when four is done and they are okay with it, then it ends up being normative and it will not be changed again. So patient, one of the kind of the core resources of fire, of course, is normative, and that will not change. So that's something you can use very, very freely. Yeah. Again, not too much details. So I have a lot of text on this last. Um, so when you start kind of doing your own fire, right? Because um, fire, I can go back to this one. Fire itself is it's not of the box, not something you can use. It, it's, in, it's in some ways very similar to DHS2 in that way. Like if you just start up an empty database of DHS2, what, what can you do? Nothing, right? So you start creating your organits, you start creating your data elements, your data sets. There's a whole process, right? And that process also exists in Fire, and they call it, they call it, they're calling it profiling. Uh, so you're kind of creating, say, you had, for example, the, the patient resource I showed you. Uh, what's required of that patient resource is nothing. You can send an empty patient with absolutely no properties, and it's legal, out of the box. So you have to go through a step called profiling. You say, for example, oh, I require a name. I want my patient to have a name. Okay, okay, then you profile the patient and saying name is required. Oh, but you also want date of birth. Okay, you can add that. So, so that's very similar to DHS2 in that way, because we have attributes that you can add to your track entity, for example. And, but here is a bit more form, formalized way of doing it. Um, other than that, they also have what's called extensions uh, that allow you, uh, for example, to take an example that we we have in DHS2, we have something called attribute values for metadata, right? So like an organization unit might have additional data added to it. That's not a concept they have in Fire. So we created an extension point for that to allow you to, to also have that in Fire. And I will, I will 
quickly show you our our for that later. Yeah, I talked about this a little bit already, but yeah, it's basically customization of 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 of, of five higher. And yeah, Bob wants me to talk about this. I, I don't know how much you're going to go into details. Uh, so logical models is basically how you start developing your, your, your fire, fire profile. And I will show you soon some very simple examples of that. Uh, but it basically allows you to create a version of your model, like DHS2, without thinking too much about fire itself. So for example, short name doesn't exist in fire, but using a logical model, I can still map that in without having to create extensions for it. So, so, uh, so it's, it's a very nice way. It's, a good, it's usually the starting point of creating uh, a, a profile, basically. And it's something I really recommend. If you're starting on fire, I would really recommend starting looking at logical models because that's everybody's using the, those these days, and it's it's actually a very very powerful tool. Yeah, again, profiling. Again, that's coming after the logical models. Um, and here you go and saying, oh, I, I will require this, I will require that. Um, for example, uh, our organization units has a, a property called level that doesn't exist in a fire. So we create an extension for that, added, added it to the profile, and now we have, can support levels. Um, and for example, we have ID and code. Well, okay, but then we have to also add that to our profile. And I will show you that very soon. And again, the last step here is what's called an implementation guide. Uh, so implementation guide, and I will show you on how it, how it looks. And we, can, we, can do the, yeah, we can do this one. So this, this is ours. This is one we are making. This is very much work in progress. But this is not only the profile. As you can see, there's an entire website and that website is built by, by some tooling that they have provided us. And using that, you can see we have now a full overview of all the things we have defined in the system. It's not that much yet. Uh, it will be a lot more later. But you will see that, for example, for the, our HIV package, we have a um, patient sex at birth. I can zoom in a little bit. And you see that here now we have defined all the codes we require for our HIV program in DHS2 as part of the Dolly Show metadata packages that we have created. And you will see we also have translations. So this is the implementation guide. And this is more of the profile, right? I'm not going to show. I, I, I promise not to show too much of, uh, of JSON, but. Uh, yeah, so this is the actual profile part of it, but the website and everything, everything around it, all the tooling, everything is called the implementation guide. So that's, that's usually where you have all the documentation, you have all of this stuff cobbled together. Um, and this is why it's, this tooling around the fire is really, really, really great. I mean, that's one of the things that really brought us into the fire to start with because we were kind of impressed by the tooling it, and it allows us to really create good implementation guides. Um, so yeah, so that's something we will be looking at, at more. Let me just go back to my slides. Yeah. Just a couple of very, very quick resources that we are using actively a lot. Uh, one of them are, is the code system. Uh, so that's basically option sets. So you can have this, uh, option sets are code systems, basically. And, 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 um, and we have defined also our own, own version of that. Um, and another one, a uh, very typical one that a lot of people are using, is called a questionnaire. So a questionnaire is basically a form. It's like kind of the simplest of the simplest way of the, the, doing it with, with fire because it allows you to define a form, basically. So you can imagine having a data set of, with aggregate data that you're collecting, saying, okay, for this, input element, this is a boolean, this one is text, this one is an integer, and so on. Or, or maybe we were even pointing to a different code system, uh, so you have a drop down and then with different values. And then 
when you have that defined, that's kind of the definition of the metadata if you want. And then you have the questionnaire responses, which you can compare to events or data value sets that you're sending data into the system. And, and then they do, those are validated against each other. Again, this is the tooling they provide us. Uh, Fish and Sushi is an interesting name. Um, but it's, it's, it's basically a common, a, a new language they have created to kind of more easily create those implementation guides. Uh, I have a couple of links there. One is the official Fish School, which is just kind of a series of uh, tutorials you can go into. And they're, they're, they're Come, uh, quite useful if you never used it before. They tell you how to install the tooling, uh, how to do all of that kind of stuff. Um, and and, and the, uh, yeah, and you, you need a couple of things like Ruby and Java and everything, but it's all it's all explained in, in those in those things. And uh, I'm not going to go into that. We, we, this is what we are also using. So yeah, there's some of this already, but. One thing is that I want to just emphasize this. We, we have actually been working on FIRE for many years. I don't, again, I'm not sure people know that. We have been working with OpenHIE to implement some of the, some of the profiles they, they, they created. Um, one is MCSD, which is for organization units. Other one is uh, SVCVM, which is uh, the shared value sets, uh, which are basically option sets. Uh, we have support for that. The repositories are still in our code, but the uptake has been like, not nobody has is, is, is using it. So, so um, we also had the fire adapter, which has been adapted uh, or adopted uh, by a few companies. Uh, I think OpenSAP is using it. Uh, they're also using it, it in um, Zimbabwe, I believe. Um, but from our side, this is now um, deprecated and, and, and end of life. Um, part of the problem with the, the, the adapter was that it was extremely generic to the point where it was uh, kind of hard to use and hard, hard to understand. It was a very nice engineering piece. It was very good in itself, but it, it got too, too generic in a way. Um, so we, we, what we want to do now, we want to kind of focusing on specific use cases. So there, there are a few things we have started already. As I said, we have defined our, our organits and our option sets in, in a file profile, kind of the building blocks of these two. Uh, and Johan has been working on uh, the HIV program, and that's not done yet. It, it's, a, it's a work in progress. It will be for a long time. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. And the link is there. But uh, yeah, another one we are also working with, or will start working with, is Sri Lanka on this World Diabetes Compass. Um, that's been mentioned a few times already, I think, in the conference, so I'm not going to get into that. But, um, but that's something we are actively working on. Um, we're hoping to also now start integrating with Indonesia in, in the new system, the fire system. Um, so so uh, that was presented on, on day two, so maybe almost on, on Tuesday, so maybe not everybody was there. But it was um, it's basically a new fire system they had developed uh, using Google Cloud. Uh, and now they want to take that last mile into DHS2 so they can do aggregate and, and um, dashboards and so on to visualize the data. So that, that's something we will be working on in the future. Uh, I've also been working with PAHO um, in Latin America <coughs> on uh, SAVI and AFI. Uh, and again, this is using the approach we mentioned before, the, the questionnaire response. So they have defined a huge uh, questionnaire. And now for, for these two, we are pulling out the data we require, and we're creating a response to that that we are sending into their fire system. Uh, and then we have a, there's a connector content coming up in, in Chile in January, where they will be testing out that and see how it works. Uh, yeah. The last one, uh, almost the last one, uh, the Smart Guidelines project um, is also something that we are involved in now more, more and more, um, especially Bob. Um, we, are, we are maybe not, they have kind of been changing through the years, to be honest. So a smart guideline created two years ago or one year ago is not the same as they do today. Um, but they have released a new one for measles, measles and immunization, uh, and, and that's what we will focus on. We're kind of going to just focus on that. 
Um, when the other, other guidelines are updated at the, at the point, we will also uh, look at in, implementing those. But, but for now, you'll focus on one and, and, and kind of get a bit of experience around that. Uh, and then we will, then, yeah, then we'll see the other ones later. But we will also be creating our own uh, implementation guides, of course. And please, 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 if you have any questions regarding fire integration, especially fire, if you have any kind of country project up and coming, you need some help, you need some guidance, please reach out to us. We are, we are actively looking for projects that we can get involved with, with fire um, to kind of broaden our own, own ex experience. So if there's something that's happening in your country, you know something that's up, maybe you have a question, maybe, maybe um, you, you, people ask you, does the issues you support fire? It's, it's not a yes or no question necessarily. It's something that, that needs to be kind of explained in a different way. So, so, so please reach out to us if you have those kind of questions. We do also have uh, a weekly Friday call. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's called like an integration community call. Um, again, if you want to be part of that, if you want to be part of the, that calendar invite, just send us an email and we will add you to the list. Um, so then, then, then you can join. So, some weeks we have a very short meeting, there's nothing, no topics. Other weeks we will have a longer meeting where we have a specific topic that's been announced before. For example, we had, um, uh, we had the people from, uh, yeah. Open the MRS, we had at least one one Simon. We had a few, few other people also, but, but, but yes. So from so time to time, we will have some invited guests that represent kind of the system uh, that they have been creating. And we are hoping to do that a lot more in the future. So a little bit about the roadmap. Uh, yeah, I have 15 minutes left. So we are, uh, this is done, some of this is done already. Uh, we have updated now most of our code to be using kind of the new releases of software as DHS2 has. We kind of gone to the same level. Um, we have also, how, how many people know what open API? A, a few, a few. So we have started now creating our own open API specification, which is auto generated by the, by the, by the system itself. I just want to quickly show it off. Um, it's very, very nice. As you see, there's a lot here. <laughs> it's a, a bit overwhelming, but if you know what you're looking for, for example, oh, I want to create an organization unit. This, this is a good uh, place to start. In this case, it's just a, um, a category, but if you... Oh, this is different. This is not a... Um... Uh, the internet isn't always the best, but. Yeah. So here's, you can see, in this case, we're creating our center unit group. And you will see there's some, some example payloads and, and, and some talk about, you know, for example, this is all the, the strategies you can do with the importing. If it's a create, create an update, or just update, or even delete. Uh, you can see that. And, then, and there's also some examples See, you see, of, of how, how to create one. And you will see this is a, a, a typical response. Or, or not error in this case, but it depends on what, what you're doing. So this is a very, very useful tool. I hope people will start looking into this. We are definitely start, going to start using it in the, in the, in the integration team. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, there is a link there, so please have a look if you want. Um, the other thing is, of course, the two APIs I mentioned, the uh, event hook and the root API. Um, we also want to integrate that into our SDK, because right now that's just existing DHS2 as its own API, but we want to make it easier for us to, to do that in, in the camel component itself. So we want to kind of integrate those things together in a, in a, in a bit better way. Um, and then one of the things we have been talking about a lot, and this is not coming soon, <laughs> to say to the least, we are talking a one to two year project. We want to create something more generic middleware. So we have been creating, you know, we had the PyPower project, we have, we have an ICD-11 extract, we have all of these kind of different software, but they all live in their own repositories separated. So there's not a one thing, right? So we're kind of re re reinventing the wheel a little bit every single time. Um, but we want to go away from that model and create an actual DHS2 middleware that you can start up next to your DHS2 
that will be allow, allow you to, we have some functionality built in, but it will also allow you to extend it and, 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 and kind of continue on that. Um, but again, very new. We are hoping to get something started at least in the next year, um, but it will take some while. And, and we will have some, we have some use cases for it already. So, so, so the, in, in the start, we'll be probably focused on fire uh, for quite a bit. Um, but again, we will see. But it's something that's hoping. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit similar like OpenHIM, but it's not OpenHIM, okay? There's a very different kind of system. It's, it's a very different kind of system. Um, and, and there's also going to be a UI for it, um, which is we kind of have to have, right? So it's more user friendly. Again, fire. Um, these are done already, basically, uh, which is great. Um, we do want to look into generating questionnaires. As I said, those are kind of the form, um, but we should be able to auto create those forms based on an existing data set, for example. So you can just point to your dish as to point to this data set and we'll get the questionnaire. Then you can give that questionnaire to somebody else and they will create a response to it. And now we can import that into dish as to So that allows people to, to use fire to, to, to also send data into, into us. And another thing is the IPS. So that's called the international patient summary. It's basically just um, abbreviated version of, of your health data, like for, for, your, for your own sake. Like, so if you're traveling, for example, it can, it can contain like your vaccine reporting and everything like that, or any kind of medication you're taking and, and different kind of hands. And then, yeah, again, more and more and more we were using this tooling to, to generate. Uh, another thing that's kind of missing in DHS2, or at least it's not great, is identifiers. So of course we have the ID field and we have the code field, um, and you, you have kind of attributes, but it's not really not really the greatest way to do, do stuff. So we are looking into working with the platform team to adding more functionality uh, for uh, having additional identifiers. Uh, this is especially important if, for example, you are synchronizing uh, your organization units, for example, right? So. Different, different uh, systems will have different codes, most, most likely for the same organit. So you want to have, define your organization unit to have all of these, these, these codes. And you can do it kind of today, but it's not, not ideal the way it's implemented. And then the last one is terminologies. Uh, as you probably know, option sets and options are not the greatest model in the world. Uh, it's something we have to live with, but we are hoping to create um, Another version of that in DHS2 that will support stuff like hierarchies and stuff things like that, but at the same time we will convert them into option sets for actual visualization and so on. So, so that's hoping something something we'll do. Um, we are also having uh, academies. This is something very very new for us. We had one in Rwanda um, in April, in March. Uh, we are definitely having one uh, next year also. We are actually looking into having one in Asia this, this time, um, but th that will be announced on our website. So if you have developers in the team and so on that want to learn more about integration with practical examples, and it's more of a workshop than an academy, really. Um, so please, please reach out to us uh, or just watch our website. It will be announced on the community of practice uh, when, when, that, when that happens. And that will be decided probably by the end of this year. Hopefully we will decide the venue and, 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 and the dates for that. So probably sometime after, after the summer, summer for us, so maybe September or something, August or September, uh, you, you will see. Okay, so I have seven minutes left, so questions? I know we are a little bit over, over, over time. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Morton. Should we expect uh, this webhook stuff available for data as well? Sorry? Should we expect webhook stuff available for data as well? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so we are really, really hoping to have in version 41 uh, support for Tracker. Uh, that's kind of the, what I would say is what you have to do. Um, how much of the Tracker that involves, we will have to see. Um, we, can, we can create 
100 hooks inside the tracker, or we can create kind of focus on create, update, delete, and so on. Um, but yeah, there's something that's definitely on the roadmap for 4041. Uh, but we are kind of running out of time a little bit, so we have to soon, soon they kind of decide on where to put all those things. Um, other than that, for also for aggregate data, it could also be interesting. So, for example, when a data value is added to, to a data element, you maybe want to listen to that and, and react to that. Um, this can also be interesting, for example, in cases where you want to uh, update other systems. So for example, if you want to put something in uh, Elasticsearch or something, that you can just push that in, in, into that system. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something we're looking at. And potentially, we can have hooks anywhere in the system. So, like, so that's up to you guys. When you up update the latest, you say, oh, I'm, I really wish when I did this in DHS2 that there was an event, event hook going out somewhere and doing something. Send us a Jira request, feature request. It's probably, uh, as long as we can agree that it's a good idea, it's a very small implementation detail, and it's something we can do very, very quickly. Yeah, hold on. Uh, two things. One is the route API. Yep. So uh, I understand that is uh, we can uh, call it from inside DHS2 to any external systems. Yes. So uh, for their authentication and others. So how could we get this configuration so that we can, uh, for example, for NID verification on any, any other external API? Specifically, we had issues in the, during the COVID. Uh, this is the first one. Second one is uh, what Judge Jubair says. So I don't repeat that question. Uh, for for other system like say open srp the fire profiling the world diabetes compass so was the, is that is possible is available to lower versions say version 36 or 39 when there that's we could so, on or should we move to newer version no so for the, when it comes to fire uh, all of that support will be done outside of ot so 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 we, we will be able to target uh, end version basically uh, there might be some API differences from version, say, 37 to 40, so you might have to do some adjustments. Uh, but if that's a request for somebody to say, oh, this doesn't work with this API, we probably can, we probably can, can make that work anyways. Um, because it's, a lot of the integration stuff you do is not in DHS2. Uh, so so that, that's, why we, that's why we want to create this middleware, which kind of, we have a service to start up alongside DHS2 and kind of com communicate with DHS2. Uh, and maybe even have a UI inside the issues to, to configure that middleware and, and kind of do some. So, so yes, that, 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 that should be possible. That should be possible. Um, when it comes to authentication, I promise not to show <laughs> Jason again, but uh, we support multiple different types of authentication. And this is all encrypted and stored locally. So, so that this is sort of great, right? Because then when you do this stuff, this is very simple example, of course, but when you do this kind of request, the user who runs it is not allowed to see this. You can only run that route, and when he runs that route, all this authentication stuff is added automatically. And we also support API tokens for that. And and and, and, and you can add. I'm not sure if you have an example of that. Uh, no, but you can also add custom headers, complete custom headers that you can also add, add to the system. So yeah, that's definitely possible, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other last questions for Morton? All right, big thank you to Morton for his presentation. Right, so uh, the tea is ready outside, but uh, just before we break for tea, one announcement. So uh, those of you who have not collected your conference package, so uh, the bag with uh, the umbrella, the most important and everything else, uh, so your uh, conference package is ready at the registration desk, so uh, you can go there and collect it. Right, so with that, I think we can break for tea, and uh, we'll meet, meet again at 11. Thank you. Sri Lanka is ambitious, fun, fierce, fabulous.
fearless, free spirited, breathtaking, connecting, soaring, winning. Sri Lanka is fearless, curious, full of action, passion, fusion, fashion, vision. She means business, she is determination, timeless, full of kindness, luxurious, magical. Sri Lanka is art, Sri Lanka is craft, Sri Lanka is heart, Sri Lanka is a feeling. She is healing, a love story, a lifetime story, a brand new story. Earth's favorite island is ready for you. So wild, so pure, so vibrant, so natural, so majestic. So Sri Lanka.